Here now, Jordan Weber, Olympic gold medalist and survivor of Larry Nassar's abuse. As you said in, in uh, the courtroom, you're a victim, but you are an Olympian, uh, first and foremost. And we congratulate you on that, Jordan. Uh, you're an amazing person. Uh, and all of you are for standing up and talking about this. So thanks for being here tonight. So when you watch Thank that you. and you listen to Marta and Bella Caroli and she, you know, crosses her arms over herself and says, how could I have known? Even the parents didn't know. What do you think? It's very disheartening that they can't see that the environment that they created and the training style that they continue to enforce on all of the club coaches and the gymnasts, they, they can't even see that, that that is part of the problem. They, they created this intense environment that allowed someone like Larry to come in and easily, easily abuse young girls. And even if they didn't see it with their own two eyes or hear it with their ears, they weren't making sure that it wasn't happening. This was happening on their property. Mm -hmm. They allowed him to be alone in a room with alone in a room with us and treat us anyway. What that about he, wanted. he allowed and them to be alone in hotel rooms? Did he was he ever in a hotel room with you? Did he ever treat you give you in the hotel room? Well, anytime we went to an international competition or even the Olympics and the World yeah. Championships, he was allowed to treat us wherever he designated that treatment room to be. Mm -hmm. and, and USA Gymnastics did not did not look over him. They didn't supervise him whatsoever. You know, uh, Michaela Maroney says that that she after that moment that she speaks about so emotionally in, in that interview, she says that the next day she spoke about it openly in a car and that the coach, John Getter, was in that car um, were you in that car? I was in that car. I remember Michaela describing what happened to her, and I know that there was another adult in the car, and whether they heard it or did not hear it, it I mean, it would have been very difficult to not hear that. Um, it's just very disappointing that an adult would hear that and not say anything or do anything about it. And you know, I want to show a, a tweet that Allie Reisman uh, sent out. She was very upset. Uh, she, she was part of this NBC piece on Dateline. And this is what she said today. Our prime time for investigative piece, no interview scrutiny of current recent executives of USAG, the organization responsible for the sport and much of this mess. Why? I named someone currently in power at USAG that I reported Nasser to, and it was omitted. Why? Still many unanswered questions. So she's saying that someone who she went to and explained that she was being abused is still in, in power at USAG. Do you know who that is? I have my suspicions. I don't know 100 percent, but I do know that even though the board of directors at USA Gymnastics all resigned, the people in power that have the most interaction with the athletes on day to day at the training camps, at the competitions, they are all the still same. They're still the same people there. And so I have a feeling it's one of those people. And I think that as long as they are still in power, USA Gymnastics is never really going to understand what truly the problem is and how to accept accountability for what they have enabled an abuser to do and, and the culture that they have created. Do you think that USA Gymnastics, that there should be hearings, that they should be investigated? Yes, I absolutely think so. I think that there should be a hearing where USA Gymnastics has to be there and, and they are asked questions yeah. and, and they are asked why are there no medical records of our treatments at the ranch and great question. I mean, that among many other things. That's a great question, Jordan. I hope you'll come back. Good to see you tonight. Take care, okay? Thank you. You as Thank well. You.